In honor of Earth Day, let's talk about some ways that we can reduce waste in our paper crafting. Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies in time. So today I have a list of, I think it's 30 things that you can do to reduce your waste in paper crafting and a lot of these save you money. Occasionally they are a little bit more expensive, but hopefully the ones that save you money balance them out. And also I just want to take a beat and say, it's okay if you don't or can't do any of these things. I understand that like seasons of life and disability and all kinds of things like that can get in the way of our ability to always make the best choice. And so this is not about making anyone feel bad. It's just about sharing some ideas because especially because so many of them, I do think have an economical aspect to them. So, you know, maybe the saving money and reducing waste combination can be motivating. So. Using, I, I kind of categorize them as four things. There's gonna be a little printable. You, of course, don't have to print it because that could be wasteful, but it's a sort of a reference list for you to look over and I'll probably put it in a blog post as well. First thing is product swaps. You can use recycled printer paper or cardstock instead of regular paper and cardstock. I have had a really hard time finding recycled cardstock, but I can find recycled printer paper, 100% recycled, and I do do printing of my templates and things like that. So I find that that does come up in my crafting and I do have to pay a little bit more for it, but I think, you know, we all make an effort to recycle things. But we also need to buy things that are made with those recycled materials. Using cloth instead of disposable wipes, this is a really economical one because I have had this cloth from the dollar spot of Target for probably 10 plus years and it has like a waffle texture to it. So it, you know, kind of gets in there and cleans things up. I will say so a lot of people recommend microfiber cloths. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but do consider that they are made of plastic. And so when you wash microfiber cloths, you are spreading plastic. And so I kind of prefer cloth when I can and when it does the job. And so it's just something to consider. Cardstock scraps instead of foam tape. So I take two pieces of thick cardstock and I glue them together and I use that to put behind elements on my card instead of foam tape. And you can do this with like packaging as well. Like I save tags, any little pieces of cardboard I get and I just put them together because I figure while that stuff might go in the recycling, sometimes, especially if things are really small, they actually can't be recycled very well. And so I would be better off replacing something that's foam with something that was going to be trash anyway. Paper confetti instead of sequins. Sequins are obviously made of plastic. They're super fun, but consider is there times where you could use a little die cut heart or star or something like a shape like that instead um, and this is also a great way to use up those scraps, especially if you have scraps of specialty paper that you were using anyway or you already own. Could you maybe make some little gold stars to use while those are also still made of plastic, at least they're being used from your scraps as opposed to being like newly made plastic. Biodegradable ink blenders. Of course, if you already have ink blenders, don't go out and buy specifically biodegradable ones. But I thought this was cool because they're supposed to be compostable. They're from EcoTools and I wanted some like sponge dabber type ones because when I do stenciling, I like to be able to dab through and my brushes don't do a very good job of that. Although I did find these ones, you can also brush on and get a really like soft edge. So I thought they were quite nice and I know that there are other makeup sponges out there that are not biodegradable that are considerably cheaper, but I just thought this was a cool option to bring up in this relevant video. Um, biodegradable glitter. I don't really use a lot of glitter, but if you really like it, then they do have glitter that is made to dissolve over time. Cardboard from packaging instead of cardstock. So this is more my repurposing section. I've done this before where I've used like an old box instead of using a piece of craft cardstock. I wouldn't always recommend it, but it's something to consider. Um, junk journals, perfect for anything where like, if you know the recipient, so you're not worried about using an old food packaging or even non-food packaging can be used for this. It's not something you're always gonna wanna do, but especially when they're like just layers that you're putting behind something, it could be worth it. Plastic packaging instead of acetate or vellum. So if you get the plastic packaging that your stamps and stuff come in, instead of throwing that away and then buying other plastic, using that as your, like, you know, for a shaker card. I was also thinking for vellum, you know, sometimes you get those glassine envelopes. They're not quite the same as vellum, but just looking at your, before you throw something away. And you know what? I know all of us crafters do this because we see treasure where other people see trash, for sure. Sturdy boxes, 
and reuse containers over plastic packaging. So I like to save old cell phone boxes. They're particularly sturdy. This holds my acrylic blocks. I like them too because they're pretty clean looking, but you can also um, use like old food packaging as long as it's washed out. And then of course, I personally kind of prefer things on my desk to look prettier. If that's not a problem for you, you can always like recover them, paint them, that kind of thing. But also they're perfect for just inside of drawers. Reuse calendar pages, greeting cards, wrapping paper, maps, etc. instead of pattern paper. I've done this before. I have a video where I use some old calendar pages and I remake them into cards. And then my friend had sent me these old pages because she thought, oh, of course she'll use them because people think that about us crafters. And I did. And I, I made her a bunch of cards and gave it back to her so then that way she could give new life to them. So um, saving ribbon, twine, and other fibers from packaging. So again, just take another look at your packaging. A lot of times tags on clothing, they'll come with like a little string attached. And when you're just trying to put the same thing on like a tag on your car, you just need a little bit of string, they can really come in handy. Products that reduce waste. I have my no scrap templates. I mean, they're free, so is that a product? I don't know. But they come for 12 by 12, six by six, eight by eight, six by eight, eight and a half by 11, like, pretty much every paper size you could think of, I'll have templates for and they tell you how to make cards with that paper without making scraps. So that's great because there's no scraps involved there and it really encourages you to use what you have. Um, so you can find those on justcrafts.com slash resources. There'll be a link in the video description, of course. And you might think, well, these are all covered in plastic. These will get a, will kind of tie into something I'm going to say later. I actually thrifted most of these because, especially office products, a lot of times you can find those where somebody bought too much and at least you're not buying them new. Um, and these also, uh, I reuse them over and over and over again. Like, they've held other things in the past. I, while well, I do use plastic packaging in my craft room, I try to reuse it as often as possible whenever I'm done with something giving it another thing to hold. So, um, and they go for a slimline, five by seven, A2, all kinds of card sizes as well. I just know I just showed you slimline, but I have all kinds. Epson Eco Tank Printer. This is a little bit more specific, but um, my Epson printer is an Eco Tank, and that means that I can get like bottles of ink and refill it many, many times, rather than having to recycle the cartridges and having to replace them as often. So it's really, really economical on ink, and then beyond that, the refillableness of it is important, and it ties into my next two things. I realize that a printer is a lot of plastic when you buy a printer, but if you're going to have a printer anyway, getting one that is eco-friendly and thinking about how you can get more out of it and save in other ways to compensate for the fact that you you just had to own a printer. And that is, one of the things I would suggest is clip art. Now, I like to go to creativefabrica.com. I've just had a lot of success with them. They have a lot of really cute stuff, but I've also bought stuff on Etsy and there's some other ones out there. I'm gonna link Creative Fabrica because that's where I find a lot of my cute stuff. And digital stamps. So now I can, then I can print exactly what I need in exactly whatever size I need and I don't have to get the plastic packaging that comes with die cut embellishments. Because if you've ever bet, bought a set of coordinating die cut embellishments, often you won't even want all of them. There'll be a few that you're like, I don't even need to use that one anyway. And then they had to print it and send it overseas in packaging and plastic packaging. You know what I mean? Like all of that where I could just be like, you know what, actually I really like just these couple of cups from this clip art set and I just printed off exactly how many I want for my project or something like that. And same thing with digital stamps is they don't have to manufacture the stamp. It's particularly good if you really like to do Copic coloring because I think that a lot of digital stamps lend themselves well to that style. And just Sweet November is one of my favorite digital stamp companies and they do make physical stamps as well. Refillable supplies. I think that there's a lot of refillable supplies in crafting. Um, things like Copic markers, adhesive, and our inks. Most of our inks, you can get re-inkers. So you don't have to buy a whole new ink pad. Um, I use the Advanced Tape Glider from Scotch. It's a pretty big plastic honking thing, but I have refilled it probably hundreds of times with that tape roll, and I didn't have to buy a new plastic dispenser at all. So I much prefer refillable or like my Barely Art glue. I have a big old bear full of more glue that I can just keep refilling it with. My Copic markers can be refilled. And that kind of ties into the next thing because Copic refills work for this too. Multiple use products. 
Copic refills can be used the same way that like Tim Holtz alcohol ink can be used. So I don't have to have both. I happen to have both because I got a really good sale on them. And that's another thing. Be careful of those sales because you'll buy things you don't need. But at the time I didn't have a lot of Copic refills. And so another thing is like distress inks. These also work for watercolor. So if you don't watercolor much and you have distress inks, it'll probably do the trick. If you like to use colored pencils, watercolor pencils, that kind of thing, a pencil extender can help. Um, I've even seen people do it with like putting an old pen cap on top of it just to make it a little bit longer. Uh, sand erasers. This one's a little bit, maybe not as obvious, but with a sand eraser, sometimes it allows you to erase a little dab of ink. I'll see if I can demonstrate it quickly. It's probably not going to do a perfect job, but if I got some ink where I didn't want it, I can kind of erase it away. I can, I think in addition to this, um, like adding a little die cut on top of it, but these can save a project. So now I don't have to throw away, assuming, you know, I had a bunch of other stuff on here. I don't have to throw away the whole project because my sand eraser has saved the day. Hopefully you could see that it was there and now it is much, much more faded. Habits and lifestyle choice. I don't really know what to call this category. It's just like the decisions that we make regularly. Keeping products in original packaging instead of stamp pockets or other storage systems. A lot of times, eventually, the, stamp, the original packaging will rip. But I like to cut the top off of it. So, like, you get a new stamp set, and then you cut the top off. I'll show you an example here. Like, these are just gigantic, which is part of it. But I cut the top off, and then I added a little magnet strip to keep them in place. But avoiding things like that, like, if you don't need that, because like if I have just a single word, for instance... I don't need to hold it in place with a magnet, so I won't be wasteful. And again, I'll reuse that. If I ever decide that I don't need this die set anymore, I'll peel that off, put it away, and the next time I need some magnets, I'll go to it first. Okay, thrift or buying used. I wish I could buy more things thrifted, but like I mentioned, I found my page protectors thrifted. I find a lot of office products thrifted, but you can... I've. I have found Lawn Fawn stamp sets in my thrift store. I know that sounds crazy, but there also are arts and crafts reuse centers, and I will link a few in the video description where they specifically collect arts and crafts supplies, and so you can go there and have better success than you might at a random thrift store. But thinking about what kinds of products, like, you know, printer paper or something like that that you could get or um, maybe even adhesive or glue. So it's maybe not, you can't get the latest and greatest stamp sets there, but maybe you can find um, a paper trimmer and replace the blades or something like that. Buying in bulk, I think this is really important because it reduces the overall amount of packaging. So if you know you use something a lot, rather than getting it shipped to you once a month, getting it shipped to you once a year by buying a bunch of it, if you can at once. I in particular like to buy envelopes in bulk making your own card bases and or envelopes. So I don't really make my own envelopes very often, but I do, I know many people do, and I think it's a great idea. But making your own card bases, I think is, you save a lot of money and you can save a lot. Cause like when I buy card bases for five by seven cards, and I don't do this very often, but they come in like plastic packaging. So if I just buy a big old ream of cardstock and cut it down because a piece of eight and a half by 11 makes two A size card, two A two size cards perfectly, then I've saved myself money and a lot of materials, not so much time, because now I have to make the card bases, but limit your buying and reduce your impulse shopping. I know that's a big, broad thing to say, but honestly, I think that we all could try to work on that because we, when we get excited about a new craft, we tend to buy more things, and then over time, we kind of learn what we like and trying to be a little bit more conscious of that. What do you really actually use time after time? Making the most of our supplies. Just a couple of suggestions. Please leave any additional suggestions you have about reducing waste in general, um, specifically about this one, because I know everyone loves to make the most of their supplies. So if you have another tip, let us know. But I was thinking like when you die cut from the center of a piece, so like I have this and then I'm going to put a design on top of it, for instance, I've covered that hole anyway, and I recommend doing that pretty regularly. Uh, saving leftover paint or getting multiple prints from a single use of ink. So sometimes people like ink through a stencil and they take the stencil that's covered in ink now and you can like spritz it and then make a print with it. So you get two backgrounds for one. 
things like that are excellent. Splitting with a friend. I know this one's an, this is kind of challenging because not everyone knows somebody in like that they can, you know, meet up with regularly, that kind of thing. But considering when you get a paper pack, if there's, and I've done this with my mom and sister when they were crafters and my mom still crafts, but like, splitting up the paper pad because we don't each need four sheets of it or even just two sheets of it. So you could consider even with a friend like kind of swapping like um, if you know if you have a friend like across the country that you only talk to over Zoom calls or whatever you can still do this you know fill a little box full of the stamps and dies and paper and whatever else that you're like I'm not using this as much anymore I'm going to send you my box you send me a box you know and then we'll kind of um, get re-inspired by each other's old stuff because it'll be new to you recycle or compost as much as possible I do want to just point this out because I think sometimes the rules about recycling can be kind of confusing but like Plastic bags can often be recycled at store drop-off, and not everyone realizes that. They think it's only for, like, the plastic grocery bags, but there's actually other things that you can recycle there. Or cardstock is compostable. So sometimes, like, a little, if I had a little piece of purple cardstock like this, I actually can't recycle this. It's too small, and it's colored, which is not preferable either. So a lot of recycling places say not to take this, but it does become compostable. So look into that and just kind of learn the rules of whatever service you have available to you. And also look into, like, there might be a place you can drop things off. Like, we have a hazardous waste drop-off, but, and you think hazardous waste, like, you know, it's like, it's things like spray paint and house paint and um, cleaning chemicals. So you can't just throw those in the garbage. And also, if you have a half-used bottle of spray paint and you're cleaning out your garage, you can bring it to this place. And they have a little, like, store where you can shop for free and buy some house paint, some spray paint, some whatever that is technically hazardous waste, but they're not going to get rid of it until it's used up. And so you, you can, like, pick, you just get some free supplies that way. And so just look into it. You never know what your area is going to have and different options for recycling and reusing. Keep track of your stash to avoid doubles. It happens to the best of us. We forget we have something. We buy it again. I've talked about this before, but, you know, keeping a swatch book of all the colors you have, um, even just, like, reducing overall. Like, I, I like this because it's super helpful when I'm going to do a project, but I just know that I own all the lawn bond inks. And when a new pack comes out, I buy it, but I don't buy any other brand of ink. I just buy it. I've committed to this one so that I don't have to worry about that waste of double buying like is the pink from the Concord 9th collection which is gorgeous that different than the pink from the Lawn Fawn collection than the Catherine Pooler than the whatever else like you know um and taking pictures too this is something like I, so I have swatches and stuff but a lot of times I'll forget them but like if I just take a picture of the things that I own or take a picture of my swatch sheets that can be pretty helpful before I head to the store. And then my final suggestion, I know this is a lot of talking, but I hope it has been worth it. And if, if it wasn't, hopefully you downloaded the, um, you just you know went here and read all the, them to yourself instead. Watch reviews before buying to make sure that it's a good fit because I'll do things like that where I'm like, oh, this product seems so cool and I'll get it and I'll think, oh, I kind of already have something a little similar to that. And if I had listened to a review, I probably would know. I don't do that as much anymore. I've had 15 years of paper crafting experience. You get a little smarter over time, guys. <laughs> but um, when you're new, you get excited. And so sometimes you buy things that you maybe don't need um, or you realize you could have lived without. So watching those reviews can be helpful. And just make sure, of course, it's somebody who you feel like is really going to give you a unbiased review and think also about your personal stash and how that goes in. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this has given you at least one new idea to save a little money, save a little resources, make crafting a little bit more eco-friendly. I know it's not, of course it's not, it's not the most eco-friendly thing. Like we, we use a lot of stuff. We like stuff, but if there's little things that we can do, that's great. If you enjoyed this video, here's another video with more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.